All right, peep, I'm gonna go play a little poker tonight. What? I thought you weren't playing poker anymore. Hey Mr. Bill Poker Peeps, welcome to the vlog. It's been a really kind of an interesting month or so. I haven't had a whole lot of chance to play a lot of poker. I've had a few small short sessions. So this vlog, we're gonna talk about all sorts of stuff. It's kind of gonna be a hodgepodge. I'm gonna talk about poker. I'm gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna interview my wife a little bit for some stuff she has. I might put a few little funny things on here. It's just gonna be a virtual plethora of poker and Mr. Bill goodness. All right, poker peeps, a real treat. Mrs. Peep right here, <laughs> Mrs. Bill Poker. Her name, Hi guys. Her name's really Vicky. <laughs> yeah, I do have a name. Although we call you Peep all the time too. <laughs> yeah. They, that Peep is a generic name for <laughs> That we Both love each other, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So I'm gonna ask Vicky some questions and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> so tell them, Vicky, our anniversary is tomorrow. How many years will we be married? 27. 27. Well, didn't, she didn't even have to think about it. That's good. <laughs> good that she didn't ask me. <laughs> 27 years, and I've been playing poker now for eight years. So the first 19 years that we were married and the two years we dated, I didn't play poker at all. No. And so I think it's pretty cool that I started playing poker and now it's a passion that I play relatively often and, and you are cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, peeps, so I get questions all the time that people say, my wife doesn't like me to play poker or how come you get to go play poker and, or people will say, you get way more hall passes than I do, how, how come? So I wonder what you, why, because why, you don't seem to have a problem with me playing cards. Is that correct? I don't think of it as a hall pass. I don't think that's I don't think of it good. that way either. It's I know like you I... enjoy it. Sure. So that's something you enjoy going to do. So, I mean, I, I don't mind a night when I can sit home and watch my <laughs> oh, show. That, that, that's great. So it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> it has to do Why with you. Why don't you, you. Go play tonight? Exactly. <laughs> now you have said that, haven't you? Yeah. And usually why is that you say that? I don't know. Oh, oh, no. if, if we need to make some money, I'll yes, tell you. Why don't you go that, play poker? That's a true story. Sometimes yeah. she does say that, <laughs> because which means which means you have confidence in me, correct? Yes, I yeah. do. All right, guys, my Wednesday night poker league had its uh, quarterly tournament this past week. Uh, quarterly tournament is good because they add about $1,000 to the pot. There's only 26 people that were qualified. So uh, first place is around $1,000, not so bad for a little mini $100 tournament and you only gotta beat 26. I have done very, very well at all of these quarterlies and year-end tournaments. So I was excited about this one. And as per usual, I started off very, very well. Starting stack of 13,000, I was up to 23,000 uh, by the first break. This hand is against Mark Gilsdorf, who happens to be one of my kryptonites. Mark plays, let's say, unconventionally. Blinds are at 300, 600. I have 23,000 on the button with pocket kings. There are three limpers to me. I bump it up to 2,100. The first limper calls, the second one folds, the third one hems and haws, and calls. So the flop with 7,800 in the pot comes five of clubs, six of diamonds, seven of spades. It checks to me, I bet 2,500. The first limper folds and the second one shoves all in for 5,200. There's no way I'm folding on this. He could be uh, open-ended, he could have two pairs set or something, but I make the call. He's got eight nine of diamonds. Eight nine of diamonds is not optimal to play for almost 30% of your stack pre-flop, but it worked out this time. I did not win. So that hand hurt um, about another orbit, and I was down to 11,400 and played a hand against Bart Gilsdorf again. 
This time I'm in the big blind. I have queen nine of diamonds. I have 11,400. Mark makes a 1,200 in early position. Dane makes the call on the button. I make the call. So on the flop, 3,900 in the pot, and it comes 10 of diamonds, eight of diamonds, king of clubs. I have a flush draw and a gutter ball straight. Lots of outs. Mark makes a 2,400. Dane makes the call. This is the time. I shove all in for my 10,200 more. And Mark makes the call because he has a set of tens. The board then runs out. Five of clubs, four of spades. Disappointing, knocked out of the quarterly. On the first hand, obviously I'm way ahead. Second hand, here are the numbers after the flop. But numbers don't matter, cards do. He won, I lost, take it home, stop whining. Tell the people how you know if I have <laughs> won or lost. <laughs> There's a, probably a couple things. There's a couple reasons. If you tell me about it, you've won. If you don't say anything, I know I don't want to ask <laughs> because it may not be good. That's true. And the later it is that you get home, the longer it's taken to climb back up to positive or if Maybe I get home at one so o'clock, if I get home at one o'clock, I probably won. If I got home at three o'clock, it might be I, uh, not good. And if I, I get home at six a.m., I'm not. It asking. is not good. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of wins and losses, what do you think when I say I've lost a lot? What do you think that means? Do you have any idea? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to know what that means? No. Now, uh, if you, if a I, lot to me is different than a lot to you. So what would so be? I usually don't want to ask. So what would be a lot to you? <laughs> if I said I lost a lot, what would that mean? Is that fifty dollars? Is it five hundred? Is it a thousand? Is it ten thousand? It would be in the thousands, but it wouldn't be over. No, I don't even know if it'd be in the thousands. It would be way less than it that, people. It would probably be in the hundreds. Yes. <laughs> I don't I... think there's any way you'd go lose that much because <laughs> you know you wouldn't live to the next day. <laughs> That's true. You mean if it was tens of thousands? Yeah. No, there's just no way. I, no. Of course, I would never do that, not right. because of you, because I'm way more responsible. Right. And I, I trust you that way. Yes. So I know you know better. <laughs> We won't tell Vicky what my idea of a lot is, okay? <laughs> now how about on the other side? What's what's the most you think that I've ever won at one time? Well, the tournament in Las Vegas was the biggest one. Yeah, that was thirty five thousand. Like yeah, cash. just on a cash game. Mm, I don't know. A couple thousand? Yeah, thirty five hundred. Yeah. Four thousand. Now, do you think then that my big loss would be around the same thing? Probably. <laughs> if that were I true, mean... if that were true, would you be mad? <laughs> <You're> that... <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> Probably. If I came home and said, "Vicky, I lost thirty-five hundred dollars," would you? I be... wouldn't be happy. You wouldn't be happy. <laughs> but I don't think you'd ever do that. I. You mean lose thirty-five hundred? Or tell you that well, I lost thirty-five hundred? You certainly wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I would. I Actually, I would. So I tell Vicky all the time, you can look at my spreadsheet anytime that you want. I am an open book. I would not lie and tell you that I won or lost less or more than I actually did. Now Vicky doesn't ever look at my spreadsheet, but she can look at it anytime she wants. And do you know what my spreadsheet says over the last, I've been playing for eight years. So do you know what my spreadsheet says over the last eight years? You've probably heard this number. Well, I don't know the number, but what do you think I know it it's is? in the positive. But how much in the positive? Like You've heard me say I put my yeah. kids through college, right? Yeah. And you don't you remember any kind of number? I really don't. I'm up around seventy thousand dollars over the eight years, which is not a huge amount per year. It's like eight nine thousand dollars per year, but to say seventy thousand dollars, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why she sometimes <laughs> says, "Go play poker. We need something." <laughs> So this past week I checked out a new club in Carrollton, Texas. It's supposed to be one of these new legal clubs where they charge you per the hour to play instead of doing a rake. I had never played at one before. A friend of mine referred me to this place and said it was a good place, so I thought I would give it a shot. 
The name of the place was called The Hideaway. Uh, I talked to the owner. He had been actually running it as a underground game for a while. He's now running it as a, uh, again, legal game. Everything's gray. <laughs> Um, so what about the hideaway? Very, very nice place. Um, the people were really nice. The game though, my goodness, tough, tough game. I expected to go to a place like this and maybe play a little bit softer game than what I would find at the casino. Not at all. <laughs> I went to the game. I immediately recognized almost everybody there. Very, very good players, Windstar regs, and other players who I know are very, very good. So it was not a soft game at all. They were playing a 1-3 game with a $1,000 cap, uh, or I guess you could buy up to the big stack. Um, they are playing one hand of dealer's choice per round, normally either Omaha or Omaha 8. Uh, we did play a little bit of Congress. Um, so those were the guidelines of the game. So I ended up playing most of the interesting hands with KT, who is a regular up at Windstar. He used to be. I guess he doesn't play up there very much. Uh, he's from Ethiopia. He's a very, very good, young, aggressive player. Um, he had $3,800 in his stack when I got there. Again, $1,000 starting with a 1-3. So that's a pretty darn good stack to have for a $1,000 buy-in game. So we're playing a dealer's choice game. It happens to be uh, Congress uh, PLO 8 with five cards. I have King of Clubs, Queen of Clubs, King of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, Seven of Diamonds. Not a fantastic hand for high-low. Really would have been a darn good hand for high. We're playing six-handed. Somebody makes it $20 and it ends up being five of us at $20, $100 in the pot. The flop, $100 in the pot, comes seven of spades, king of spades, 10 of clubs. That's a pretty good flop. I flopped uh, top set, straight draws, backdoor flush draws. Everyone checks to me. I pot it for $100 and I end up getting three callers. The turn now, 500 in the pot, is the five of clubs. This is certainly not a bad card. It's not a great card either, as it's another low card. I would love to have been a high only on this hand. Uh, but it does also give me another flush draw. So, when all three players check to me, I pot it again, another 500. First player folds, next guy tanks, and shoves his entire stack in, which is only $290, so he calls for less. Comes to KT, and he's hemming and hawing and talking. He said, boy, you don't look comfortable over there. I don't know, you want me to gamble? I said, look, you play. I'm more than happy to gamble. I have a very, very good hand. If you want to get it in, let's get it in there. And he ends up saying, let's gamble, and he makes the call. So as the dealer is turning over the river, KT's saying, tour jack, tour jack. <laughs> So he's also got a, obviously got like an ace three for low and he needs a jack for a, like a Broadway or something. The river comes the two of diamonds. I have the nut high. Um, I don't have any low, so it's probably a neutral card um, since the other player is all in. And it turns out the other player that had, was shoved all in had a lesser flush draw and KT did have the nut low. He had ace three, queen, 10, nine, and so we chopped that pot. I started doing these videos uh, two years ago. It's actually almost two years. It'll be two years in December. No, so a couple of questions. Do you like being on the video? It's okay. <laughs> Haven't we had videos before where you said, hey, that was my idea. That was yes. pretty good. <laughs> she, she sometimes will tell me, you know, I'm the one who should come up with ideas for your <laughs> vlogs. <laughs> but you don't mind being on there. No. Billy doesn't mind being on there. No. How about Morgan? Morgan doesn't like She it. hates it. <laughs> <laughs> so how has me doing the poker vlog affected our family or our life? Well, it takes a lot of time. That's the main thing. And is that good, bad, or indifferent? Mm, sometimes it seems like too much, but... I would agree. I don't know. A lot of times you're working on it late at night and... Yeah, you don't even know. I don't even know. It definitely takes a lot of time. If you're thinking about doing it, it's a sacrifice, isn't it? Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. But I still like having Vicky on there because she makes it fun. <laughs> and then I get fun comments about Vicky too. All right, another hand against KT. We are four-handed. We are playing uh, PLO 8. 
I am on the button with 10 of clubs, 10 of spades, ace of clubs, six of spades. The KT leads out for 20. I make the call and both blinds make the call. So the flop with 80 in the pot comes 10 of diamonds, seven of diamonds, four of hearts. It goes check, check to KT. He bets 40. I make the call. Both of the other players fold. The turn with 160 in the pot is another seven. Woohoo, that's pretty darn good for me. He checks, I pot it for 160, and he makes the call. The river with 480 in the pot, ugh, two of clubs, the low comes in. Uh, we end up chopping the pot. He had ace three, eight, four for the nut low. I obviously had the full house for the high part. Man, I was free rolling this one. I get at least half the pot no matter what. If a card uh, had come not for the low, I'd have gotten the whole thing. Oh well, that's polka. I really like shooting pool. My dad was a heck of a good player. <laughs> he wasn't a great, great parent, but he was a fun parent. <laughs> when I was about 11 years old, my dad used to take me and my brother to the bar. And he would say, all right, who wants to play for lottery tickets? It's me and my son against any two players. And he would say, for our team, my son will always shoot first. <laughs> and it didn't matter because my dad was so good that if the shot ever got to him, the table was cleared. So it only ever took <laughs> not very many shots and we were winning. But I, I learned to love pool back then. I played in high school a lot at a friend's house who had a pool table and loved to shoot pool. So when we're playing poker many times at a bar, there's pool tables, so that's why I put some video and some footage in here about shooting pool, because it's a lot of fun. So, from the vlog or us playing home games with the kids, have you learned anything about cards? Poker? Well, sure. Do you like playing? It's okay. So when we have our little home games with the kids and everything, do you enjoy playing? Sometimes. I mean, I could take it or leave it. It's, really? Yeah. I would much rather play a different kind of card game than like what? Poker, but well, I don't know. We play hearts or what's the other game we play? Spades, nerds. Yeah, yeah. Nerds. She likes nerds. Just the because of the competition. Yeah, me and Billy. Boys against the girls. Me and Billy Girl. dominate them. <laughs> We dominate. No, you don't. Yes, yes we do. Just ask yes, Morgan. We <laughs> you know what's great about poker? Lots of things, but I love the competition. I love the thinking, the trying to outwit the others. But you know what I like most is the people. I have made some of the best friends through my poker league and I just want to give a shout out to all my buddies at at uh, Wednesday at Poker League, the people I've met at the casinos, uh, people who watch my vlog. Uh, I have some really really close friends, Rob and Dane and Steve and Matt. I've met them all through playing cards so just want to give you guys a shout out. Uh, you guys are my buds. I'm so happy that we met. I'm so happy that we're friends. I appreciate all that you guys do. I appreciate that we can talk and have fun outside of the poker table. <laughs> what? It's like Bon and Paul Kettle. <laughs> All right guys, that's gonna do it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and pressing buttons and saying hello and giving me comments. I appreciate it more than you know. Thank you guys for being Mr. Bill Poker Peeps and we'll see you all again next week. Bye.